with Tradimo and from now on they will take place here on the regular basis. We are going to discuss various questions which are related to trading and I hope that uh, you will find the information I present interesting and useful. Uh, let me present myself briefly. I'm analyzing and trading in financial markets since the year uh, 2010, so it seems that nine years already have passed. I um, analyze and trade currencies, stocks, and I like using both a technical and fundamental approach in my work. So um, if you have any questions during the webinar, you are very welcome to ask them and I'll gladly answer. Today we have uh, the topic on the agenda, which is called most common traders mistake. So we'll have a kind of conversation. I hope that someone uh, shares uh, his or her own experience as well. Uh, because I think that the topic is very interesting and even if you are a really experienced trader, it's worth uh, revisiting this issue from time to time because of course there are some recommendations, there are some tips, there are some uh, things we should learn how to avoid. And uh, from time to time we read articles about that, uh, watch some videos, but as we do our daily trading activities, things like that tend to escape our mind. And as a result, a lot of traders can make some mistakes which are sometimes stupid, sometimes very simple and uh, self-evident. But still, things like that happen and they should be discussed, they should be remembered in order to avoid them as uh, much as it is possible. Of course, um, you won't be able to avoid every mistake and mistakes are natural, but there are some things which, um, which are, let's say, um, what is the word? So common that, well, uh, these things definitely can be avoided. So, um, I decided to make a kind of classification of different mistakes, which is just my doing mm, because, well, some mistakes can maybe be related to several categories. But for us to understand the situation better, it's better to have some groups here. So uh, you can see that there are four categories. Procedural, analytical, money management, and psychological mistakes. So today our plan is to go through them one by one, discuss them, and, well, share opinion about them. So uh, you may have some questions about what procedural mistakes is, and we'll start with this group of trading mistakes. And um, here I meant some mistakes which are, well, not related mainly to other three groups, but which are related to some technical activities which are part of trading. Let's say it's um, mistakes related to the mythology, methodology of trading. So what are these mistakes? Firstly, uh, mistakes like inattentiveness and haste. And I must say that um, from my experience of communicating with different traders uh, who had different levels of experience, this is one of the most common mistakes. And um, the problem with a lot of people is that they, when they come to financial markets, and um, kind of open up trading software, see the charts that they see that the market is moving and people are really, really afraid of missing out. They want this uh, trading action to start from the very beginning, from the first minute they clicked on the trading software and they want to make things happen faster and faster. As a result, they can make 
some really stupid mistakes like when you open uh, a new order and you make a mistake with your trading volume and uh, actually this is a mistake which may um, be done not only by some newbie traders but we know the cases when some uh, traders in the dealing desks of big banks uh, kind of put extra zero or two to a uh, position size and that led to some technical swings in the market which uh, surprised analysts they didn't know what is happening in the price and what was happening is that someone opened too big a trade which moved the price uh, and that was totally done by mistake so sometimes um, a trade can be opened at the level you didn't want to open it maybe you mistyped something or clicked the wrong button that can happen and um, that happened to me i can remember that i was kind of absent-minded and was thinking ahead of myself about some other stuff already when i was opening a position and voila um, a mistake happened so um this is uh the thing um you should actually never be in a hurry when you are trading because to be fair we know that the market will always provide us uh, with ample amounts of trading opportunities so if you miss something it simply means that you should wait for another good chance to trade next mistake is little preparation little training i think that this is clear it happens when uh, people do not do not want to put some effort in trading they want just some easy uh, results but um, this is the question of life's unfairness i guess nothing is easy and it is necessary to work uh, in order to achieve something trading is not an exception and well of course um, practice makes uh, really mm, makes skill and makes um, experience so there is no other way i guess to um, gain that experience uh, while preparing trading and um, being a good trader uh, what is our next thing the loss of winning positions um, I put it on the list of this procedural technical mistakes and what I mean here is that um, sometimes situation happen then um, market analysis was correct market entry was great and um, the open position a person had it was actually profitable but um, the failure to take profit at a good level led to some kind of mistake uh, when the existing profit was lost this thing happens um, how to avoid it well um, take profit orders at some reasonable distances from your entry points is one thing some people like using trailing stops and that may be a good solution if you are trading trends and oh uh, well um, more experience and more trading is um, the option here as well lack of record keeping I think that everyone heard for multiple times that it is necessary to keep a trading journal but um, I always thought that it is a kind of uh, irritating talk when they say that you should write down or just keep the record somewhere of your trades um, and it may sound irritating but we can't run away from the truth it is necessary to do so because uh, you won't be able to keep all your trades in your mind several days go by and you don't remember anything 
And um, if you haven't somehow made notes of your trades, then you won't be able to analyze them and to understand uh, what went wrong if uh, the trades were unsuccessful and what uh, was particularly good done, well done about these trades if uh, these trades turned out to be profitable. Opening positions before weekend, um, it, some traders, of course, can uh, pull this through and are successful in this stuff. But um, to my mind, um, it is a risky um, endeavor. And um, if you are not sure, better uh, to uh, classify that as a kind of mistake in order to avoid it. I think that um, a lot can happen during the weekend and that can relate during any kind of financial market, uh, currency market or stock market. Uh, there, are, there is such thing as tweets of Donald Trump, which can occur on Saturday, on Sunday, and just make the situation very, very different on Monday from what it was on Friday. So that kind of is kind of risky, and this is the risk which may be avoided um, easily. Market entry right after important news. Um, once again, um, this is I, I put it here on the list, but of course, um, in some cases, this is possible. Depends on what kind of trader are you. What is your strategy? Um, of course, the first thing you should be aware that um, some news, especially if they are scheduled, like the events from the economic calendar, that they are uh, going to happen at specific times. So if um, there are some news in the calendar which are related to an asset you trade, you should know that in order to either avoid this high volatility time or use a specific strategy which will take into account the spike in volatility and be um, kind of specifically determined, um, destined to be traded at that time. So um, trading news just with the common um, strategy you use might not be the best idea. So. Um, this were procedural mistakes and you can see that yeah they are kind of related to different um, side side tasks which are connected to trading next um, are analytical mistakes um, probably my favorite part or maybe not i don't know let's see them analytical mistakes um so of course it is necessary to do market analysis um, whether you use some trading system or you make um, trades by analyzing the market each time in this case you also have a kind of approach usually but still analysis is important and the most important thing about analysis uh, of any kind of financial market is that you should try to do that objectively. Some traders have this kind of mistake that they, um, I don't know, have one glance in the chart or whatever, and they have an idea. And then they try to justify this idea. They try to look at the information, at the charts, and um, find arguments in favor of that idea. And that is, of course, not a scientific way of um, doing this stuff. The most important thing is to analyze the market and then get ideas. So analysis comes first and not after you have uh, made um, something in your mind. Um, there are two main types of analysis, uh, all of you know, I think, fundamental and technical analysis. And usually, um, especially if we talk about currency market, where 
analysts are um, battling on the issue what which kind of analysis is better fundamental or technical i have uh, seen people who belong to one group and to another group as well and have seen discussions um, about that very lively discussions and people who um, who were discussing this stuff they didn't agree with each other after all and um, if you read through the information about trading in the internet different textbooks you will see that um, this stuff continues to be discussed rather wildly sometimes to my mind um, it is not uh, wise to ignore either of these types of analysis because um, you will want to know more about the markets and not less. As a result, it is not really logical to limit yourself to only one type of analysis, especially if you take into account that um, these types of analysis have different purposes and different logic to them because technical analysis tells us what is happening at the chart what happened there and allows us to study different levels and um, make use of uh, the market psychology which is reflected in price action we see on the chart while fundamental stuff is um, explaining and giving us a hint what is moving the market so we find some underlying drivers of big trends and of some short-term fluctuations which are caused by news both of this is important so we can't just um, get rid of one or the other and um, the art of trading in great sense in a great deal is the ability to combine these uh, two types of analysis that is true for stock market that is true for currency market for cryptocurrencies commodities uh, everything mm. the logic is more or less the same uh, technical analysis is the same the differences are only uh, in fundamentals there are some specific things uh, related to each market but mm, that is not really significant so both types of analysis are important and i hope that my speech has managed to kind of convince you in this applying too many indicators to the chart um, it is necessary to have limits here um, to use not too many indicators so that you mm, are able to see the price chart and too few indicators are bad also because we know that mm, indicators especially technical indicators have um, some calculations and visualization as their main purposes so they save your time because they do all the math maps however they do not offer some new information they just study uh, the price as it is and um, one indicator will likely give a great number of false signals so to um, create a good trading system usually several indicators are used which have where each indicator has its own specific purpose but too many indicators is another end of the stick um, it is also bad and i can remember then that once um, a couple of years ago we were hiring an analyst and um, he brought us the chart with uh, his analysis and there are so many lines there are so many indicators that it looked hilarious so just what don't do that don't over analyze don't over trade try to find this um, balance and i think that um, if you trade for some time and analyze the market for some time you will 
start feeling when you have enough information to make um, an informed trading decision and when you don't have so that you will be able to see what else you need to apply to your chart to be more sure about this or that trade. Next uh, thing is that sometimes people forget about multiple time frames. A lot of people tend to ignore large time frames and so that uh, even if they trade intraday or scalp, uh, they are very mm, involved in analyzing their small piece of the chart, but they don't see the bigger picture and the bigger picture can actually make a lot of difference for the trade because uh, there may be some key important levels on um, higher time frames uh, which will provide support or resistance for the price and if you didn't switch to that time frame to have just a quick look at least it would mean that you didn't see that level and you may be wondering why uh, the price stopped or paused at a particular level. Um, you will be looking for explanations on smaller time frame, while the explanation is there on a bigger scale, so it's need to be seen. I think a very good solution is to make a habit of checking the weekly time frame um, every Sunday, for example so that um, you can see how the previous week closed and um, see which trade signals emerge from this uh, rather big time frame so that um, trading um, during the upcoming days would have already a specific framework for you from that higher time frame that is one of the option and well just during the week you can have a look at the weekly chart i'm not implying that only on sunday you should do that no 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 just do it as you feel necessary and um, the more the better this is my take on that next thing is um, not waiting for confirmation signals um, remember we spoke about haste well haste can uh, lead you to act as quickly as possible but confirmation is important because the ultimate goal of a trader is to find a trade uh, which has the highest probability of success and uh, this high probability trades are not possible if um, we do not have confirmation because um, confirmations technical fundamental whichever they act as filters which help uh, to filter out bad signals which are inevitably produced by uh, trading systems so uh, remember to find enough confirmation bad timing choice um, that is kind of a big um, question here well just i can have can make an example of um, the things which happen currently in the United Kingdom. We know that this week is very active um, and Brexit negotiations happen. Last week was very active and if um, you look at charts of some currency pairs involving the British pound, for example, pound versus the euro or GBP versus the Japanese yen, you will see that um, that kind of price action is not really um, explained by technical analysis easily, except for the fact that it was volatility. So uh, some classic trading systems, um, technical trading systems at that currency pairs, for example, would be uh, badly timed if um, you traded uh, last week or this week uh, without considering the fact what is happening. Incorrect trend determination. 
that is, um, I think, clear. But uh, what I would like to stress here is that um, the difficulty in, deter in uh, seeing trends on the chart, of course, lies in the fact that we want to find a trend as early as possible to join this trend and to make um, a great deal of trading this trend. Um, and this desire can make us see trends when there are no trends at all, actually, or maybe there would have been trends, but the market has decided otherwise, because, uh, well, it is a lively organism, the market, and uh, it can change its mind as well. So um, I usually track highs and lows on the price chart. So higher highs, higher lows, and um, take this uh, price action stuff as the first and strongest cue that um, something is happening with the trend. Maybe it is changing, maybe it is emerging. And then use things like trend lines and maybe some indicators. So uh, be attentive. Uh, try to um, have your own strategy in working with trends. Because trend trading is um, rather, well, popular. So it's necessary to do that uh, with the highest probability on your side. Ignorance of market correlation. We know that um, all financial markets are linked together really closely. And what is happening in one place will likely affect um, events in other places. So if, for example, you trade some uh, risk sensitive assets, um, you should know that uh, you have kind of one sided position, especially if you um, buy only risk sensitive assets with high yields. It means that in case the market sentiment gets worse, you will be um, exposed to um, bigger losses than uh, you would have been exposed to if you kind of diversified uh, and taken into account the fact that um, some markets can move in the same direction. What examples here? Well, if we take uh, assets which are not, um, not related to risk appetite, but on the other hand, related to risk aversion, then we say the first thing that comes to mind, some, well, Swiss franc, gold, things like that. Uh, so markets which are more or less correlated, and if we go deeper into currencies, then, uh, of course, the currencies like Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar tend to move in the same direction versus the USD. So correlations like that, be aware of them. And um, another thing here in the analytical mistakes is thinking that the market should make your wishes come true. Um, it may sound a bit silly, but um, I assure you that some people do think that um, when they open a trade on the basis of their analysis, um, and if this analysis is um, wrong, or maybe it is right, it is a philosophical question, but the market is moving in the opposite direction. Some traders continue to stick to opinion that their analysis is right. They know what is going to happen. And even the fact that the market is behaving in an opposite way doesn't convince them in that. Um, if you are a trader, you should be ready to, um, let's say, renounce your conclusions and to be rather humble 
to say that, well, I made a mistake maybe in my analysis somewhere. I will write this trade down and um, study it a bit later. But if um, I see that the market is going in the opposite direction, well, the trade should be closed. The question of stop loss and cutting loss is also a big question. It is not easy to uh, describe it um, within the framework of this talk. But the conclusion is that if uh, you are wrong, you should be ready to admit this fact and close the trade, however unpleasant this is for you. So the market, it is not possible to argue with the market, regrettably, but it is so. So, uh, dear friends, we are moving forward and we come to the next group of mistakes which are related to money management. Money management, risk management, all is tied closely together here. I think that you know this stuff, but the purpose is to remind um, ourselves about these rules because they tend to escape somewhere and people tend to forget about them. That is the sad truth of our trading lives. So um, money management, of course, here, mm, the first thing that comes to mind is that it is necessary to do sensible position sizing and not to put everything in one trade. And this is, of course, um, a kind of too much, but even um, here, people tend to become um, greedy. They want to get money faster, to get more results visible in their accounts, and they try to um, increase their trade sizes. So try to be reasonable. You can um, hear to the recommendations, which are most frequently um, written in textbooks that you can risk from one to five percent of your deposit in one trade. Well, this sounds wise, sounds like the thing you should consider, especially in the beginning of your trading career. If you are trading with a margin, then be careful with leverage. Remember that it is a double-edged sword and it can increase your profit for sure, but it can also increase your losses. Um, and have a look at leverage from this point of view. Remember that um, really there are two sides of this coin and uh, it is necessary to find some balanced solution um, as uh, with everything actually. Risk reward ratio is another important thing, uh, which together with position sizes and stop losses is a um, go-to um, must for a successful risk management system. If you do want uh, to have a risk management system and not some sporadic attempts to uh, limit risks. Risks are limited in a sustainable fashion only if um, you do that several things together, in my opinion, of course, and in my experience. So um, people always uh, tend to ask what is the best risk reward ratio in a trade. And here, well, the answer is that certainly depends because there are different conditions of the market and what is good for a range trading situation won't be good for trend trading. Um, the key thing is that your reward always is higher than your risk. So potential gain is bigger than potential loss. Uh, this is a cornerstone for um, your deposit to be 
um, safe in the medium and longer term because um, you will have an opportunity to make uh, more losing trades without uh, wiping off your deposit. And if this approach is combined with uh, market analysis of high quality and a trading system which includes um, ways to filter out bad signals, all of that together will create a solid basis for trading. So um, I think here we kind of touch the important question, the issue that people want uh, to, um, I don't know, uh, get profit fast, if we put it simply. But um, practice has shown that sustainable profit and success in the market that lasts not one day, but uh, years, can only be built on this things which are used together. Trading without stop losses, another mistake, and here op opinions may differ. I had uh, argued with a lot of people about this. And of course, if you don't want to use stop losses, well, if you are comfortable without them, um, it's up to you because you should do what you think is necessary and what you are comfortable with in the first place but um, yes for me i think that stop losses do a beautiful thing in trading because they allow us to know um, the worst case scenario and then focus on the good case scenario the best case scenario um, they allow us to stop worrying to keep a cool head and um, that's why I can't remember a trade I had without a stop loss. So, well, that kind of tells you everything about uh, my approach here. But um, if you do trade with a stop loss in every trade or in some trades, I don't know how you decide in which to use it or not because I use it all the time. But anyway, if you trade with stop loss, uh, be sure that you don't move it, you don't increase it if you have losses, because um, that would kind of kill the whole idea of a stop loss and would uh, be a disaster, I think because uh, then you have a trade which is not profitable, then you see a loss which is running, you lose the ability to see the situation as it is, and the risk that you will make something stupid is um, surely increasing. And increasing stop loss is a stupid, a stupid thing that there are no doubts of. <clears throat> Another thing which is related to this top loss question is allowing big drawdowns. So uh, when you have open positions with big minuses, with big losses, it is um, not good, of course, anytime everything is possible. The market may just magically reverse in your direction and um, your loss may turn into profit I'm not arguing with that, but well, and I'm not actually an expert in probabilities, but uh, you should face reality that then um, you have this big drawdowns, uh, the psychology kicks in, you try to do everything possible to amend the situation and these actions will likely be not really sensible. So better to put more effort in market analysis and developing a trade system than to uh, sit looking at the price chart and uh, hoping and praying that the market will reverse. So stop losses should be um, reasonable. They should be related to the technical picture on the chart and technical levels on the one hand, 
and to the size of your equity on the other hand. This way, this uh, construction of risk management will work. Another mistake is increasing commitment with success so that uh, when you have profitable trades, you start increasing trading size. And um, you may say that that is not a mistake. A person gains experience and can do more. And um, I'm not against increasing the size of trades at some point in your trading, but that should be a kind of uh, really, I don't know, thoughtful decision on your part that you are really ready to such a step because it really makes a difference, I think, with what amount of money you trade for most people um, because emotions are different and emotions do affect trading a lot. That is also the truth. So um, be careful with this thing. And not having a trading system, well, um, we can't just leave this thing out. It should be present here in this topic today, in this presentation. So um, here I mean that you may not have a trade system as such, but you surely should have a kind of approach to trading. You should have a number of instruments, even if you um, base your trades every time on some different stuff for example some trades are based on price action some trades are more related to news and fundamental stuff some trades are more related to technical indicators that is possible but um, every time you should try to um, have approach which consists of analysis um, and risk management and probably if you prefer to trade with one or two systems or strategies, in this case, um, a strategy is necessary, of course. And in this case, you should make an effort to uh, respect the strategy and not change um, its rules or principles from trade to trade because that will kill the whole principle of a strategy. So money management mistakes, here they are. And uh, rolling towards um, the end of our topic, we have uh, psychological mistakes left to discuss. And um, I can admit that when I um, came to the market and only started analyzing, reading some um, handbooks about trading, I have thought that um, this kind of fascination a lot of traders have this uh, with psychological aspects of things is kind of strange and stupid, um, like, uh, I don't know, people who like horoscopes and think that they will tell the future. But the reality is, of course, that I was mistaken there and psychology is a big part of trading that um, may be the difference between trading and many other activities and uh, occupations. In trading, um, it is um, important to understand and acknowledge the fact that psychology is important because that will make your life easier. And um, I think one of the worst mistakes which can be made here is um, sort of going against yourself and doing something which is not pleasant for you or with which you are not comfortable. For example, uh, this is related to choosing your trading style like being a swing trader, position trader, a scalper, because all of these trading styles are uh, specific for different types of personality and different strong features you 
possess and mm, not only strong features of course but your weaknesses as well um, if you choose a trading style which is right for yourself you will be able to mm, use the best of your strongest things and diminish the impact your weaknesses have on your trading so if you are ready for example to withstand high levels of stress and if you want hmm, your trading to be more dynamic then of course you will trade on some short-term time frames if uh, you do not have enough time um, but you have opportunities to sit and do really deep market analysis from time to time then swing trading and longer term trading will be best for you but you shouldn't force yourself into trading uh, specific assets specific markets or um, doing this um, specific trading styles if you just think that something is not really yours in that um, don't do that try to pay attention to your personality and find the way which will come to you naturally producing the best of results um, another psychological mistake i have here making wrong assumptions i, I now wonder what i meant by this but i guess that um, that is related to the thing we have spoken about when you just um, stick to some uh, wrong ideas even if you see that they are wrong inadequate self-esteem is um, a really common problem as well because there are people who are too confident in themselves they think that uh, they kind of control this universe and the markets and then reality just um, tells them that that is not so but when that happens it's already too late and um, they lost money and in many cases such overconfident people they do not look for the reasons of their failure in their overconfidence they try to find some other justifications and that this leads to to a vicious circle of bad stuff if you are not really confident if you doubt every step you make this is another situation and uh, this situation can be equally bad because it paralyzes your activity and uh, prevents you from doing what needs to be done so not good either and once again i have to pronounce this word balance uh, i feel like i have no escape from mentioning it but well what can i do it is so a balance is necessary in the question of self-esteem as well um starbound trading counter trend i think that is uh, clear and already mentioned following the crowd i think everyone knows that and the first thing that comes to mind here is the bitcoin situation and um, december 2017 in particular when um some let's say layers of the crowd just got into the market before the crash so um you know that there is a kind of um i don't know scheme or what that uh, then the trend starts it's the phase then uh, some uh, professional market players get in and they form this trend then uh, other traders start to get there then the general public finds out a bit about this trend and it is in all mass media 
Um, and this is the situation when the trend is already rather mature. And somewhere in this phase, uh, the professional players get out of the market and um, some newbie guys just go in line with the trend and get very disappointed after all. So, um, of course, it is a good thing to try to be the pioneer and to find trends in the earliest. That is not possible, of course, uh, every time. I can understand that. But you should still be aware that then everyone is talking about something and uh, not for one day, but I don't know, several days, weeks. Mm, you should start doubting that this trend uh, will actually uh, be happening further and further. And you should mm, start uh, thinking critically and analyze the situation more. Not necessarily close your positions and run away in panic, but at least think about what is happening, uh, what is the crowd doing, and what is the best option for you there. Overtrading, um, surely it is um, a psychological mistake. You cannot trade every opportunity. So try to uh, understand when it's sensible to stop uh, before you get too tired, to tired not only physically but psychologically and emotionally sometimes you don't feel the energy to do trade trading in this case uh, it is better to make a pause that is kind of elementary thing but i would like to stress that because um, it tends to be forgotten in many cases and it would be great that if you uh, if you are able to avoid this mistake. Finally, not studying is a mistake, uh, and I put it here in psychological mistakes. Um, not studying may be related to overconfidence, um, but also, well, I can tell you from my experience that every day I learn something new. Um, I read something, I hear something, um, I study the charts, just, well, the charts are also important. So um, I kind of understand that this is a constant process. Uh, things change, markets can change, and um, even some uh, Things which are observed in the market, some cause effect situations may change. So live and learn it is a lifelong process. And it is not a bad thing. Don't look at that as a kind of um, necessity. Try to make studying a pleasant thing. Um, and this way you will get to the win-win situation. You will learn more. You will know more, and um, this will capitalize and um, and produce good results. Yes, true. I agree, Alberto. This is the reason uh, why you attend this webinar, and um, I hope that uh, I managed to remind you some things. Maybe you have forgotten about something. Maybe you have learned something uh, today. So if you have any questions related to this topic, you are very welcome to ask them. And by the way, if you have any ideas about the topics I can um, discuss and present to you at the next uh, webinars for Tradimo. You are very welcome as well, because I'm currently on the lookout and I'm thinking what else, what next. Um, 
I would like to introduce more topics related to technical analysis in through the webinars. I hope that you are interested uh, in that. But um, some questions uh, like we discussed today, um, which are related to trading in general, I think they are also necessary from time to time. So um, this is it, guys. Uh, thank you as well. I hope that um, this was um, a good way to spend an hour on Friday evening or what is your time zone? I don't know. I think Friday for everyone. And uh, well, we made a small step to becoming better traders, I think. Uh, thank you for your attention today. I'm uh, we'll be very happy to see you at my next webinars here. And of course, I wish everyone all the best, good health, a great weekend, and um, the best of success in trading as well. <clears throat> so... Thank you, guys, and goodbye to everyone. Uh, see you next time. Bye.